Hello, saints, church, and seekers. I thought I'd peek in. It's still Sunday, and I hope that you had a blessed Sunday and that you got or have had an encouraging word from the Lord. It's been quite a Sunday here, and blessings, a lot of word from the Lord from a prayer group that I was with this morning. And I want to let you know we are going to be going into Daniel 10. I want to make sure I have as much information about Daniel 10, chapter 10, as absolutely possible. But if you'll take your Bibles out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the preface. This is going to be short. And then I will continue on through the next videos because we're going to be treating Daniel 10, 11, and 12, these three chapters, as one vision. If you'll take your Bibles out so that we can lift our hearts in prayer or bow our hearts in prayer to the Lord and thank Him for a wonderful Sunday and for His provision. Father, I just lift you up right now in Jesus' name, and I thank you, Lord, for your encouragement, for your word. I thank you for your direction. I thank you for the people that you surround us with and the encouragement that you show us favor because we're believers. You show us favor in places that we wouldn't think that we would have favor. I call in the angels of favor now to anyone that is watching this video. As believers, we should be walking in favor. We should be walking in signs and wonders. That is what my Bible says, Lord, and that is what I believe. No matter how long it takes for healing, deliverance, and the prophetic, that there will be healing. I thank you that you sent your son to die for us that he hung on a tree for three days and rose again so that we would have life everlasting for those who believe on him. I come against any hindering spirits that would try to stop the word in this video, that it would also stay away from my mind and thoughts, that God could give me revelation as I speak, that he can speak into my ear. I ask for open eyes, open ears, I bless the saints who are praying, who are believing, who are not giving up, who know what it is that it means to be a believer. I come against the fiery darts of the enemy now, and we take every thought captive, and those that are not of the Lord and not do, li do not line up with Scripture, we bind those and we place the blood of Christ over them and tell them they are not our thoughts. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, but we still should be able to be in agreement with him. Father, I thank you that you've given us grace and mercy in the church age. Some of us believe, Lord, that this is coming to a close and that time is growing short. And what little bit that I can do, Lord, I ask that you impart to me and you put it in my mouth that you give me the information Lord by your word that you would have me to be able to speak Lord that we can decide whether we're an ear a mouth or an eye the anointings Lord God we give you all the glory and all the praise in your son Yeshua's blessed name um, I find it, I found it interesting um, as I go through groups of people that Jesus is known by different names depending on who you're with. And um, some know him as Yeshua HaMashiach, some know them as Christ Jesus, some of them know him as just Jesus, some of them know him as just their Savior or Lord, Redeemer. And I talk about favor. Um, I remember saying it this morning or going towards noon as um, I was uh, sitting with my um, sisters and brothers of faith. 
And I said, we should be walking in signs and wonders. Well, one of the signs and wonders is favor. So I had to run an errand, and then I uh, uh, came back to the Aberdeen Dean area, and I thought, I really don't want to cook tonight. So what I did was I went to our local uh, grocery store, and I thought fried chicken would be really great because our cat likes the leftover chicken, and he can eat it for a couple of days, and it uh, saves us a lot of time and uh, endeavor. And I went up to the counter uh, where I can get the chicken, and it's behind glass, and it was fried. And the woman came up and she said, what can I get for you? And I said, oh, can I have a bucket of fried chicken? She got her utensils, her tongs, and she put them in behind the glass, and she turned over a couple of pieces, and she looked up at me, and I noticed she shook her head and went, she said, wait just a minute. She turned around, walked back to the kitchen, and I heard her say, can I have that fresh that just came out of the fryer? The chicken that was in front of me was perfectly good. It wasn't bad. It, it was just typical of what I normally get. She filled the bucket up, came back. I had piping hot fried chicken, even if I go to um, Kentucky Fried, it's usually not piping hot. Not, by the time I get home, it's cold. This was piping hot, fried, and I thanked her, and I said, have a blessed evening. That may sound like a really little thing, maybe, to you. But to me, that was a sign that I was walking in favor. Favor with, there were other people there. Something caused her to go get fresh. She also didn't know something that I'm not going to share with you of why it is that it would have been a good idea for me to have fresh chicken. We're coming into Passover on the, I believe it is on the 27th. People are going to be cooking uh, uh, Messianic Jews and uh, Jewish people like are going to be cooking special meals. Uh, their life will be different uh, from Passover to the end of it. We're then, I think it ends on the 3rd of April. And on the 4th of April, we have what we call Easter. Resurrection Sunday would be more appropriate to call it. And we will be celebrating the risen Christ. This Sunday coming up, next Sunday will be Palm Sunday, where Jesus came into, walked into Jerusalem, and was spending time with the people before he went to the garden and then uh, went to Pilate and Herod and then went to the cross. This is a special season. I believe we are, st we are, we're still in Lent. Lent is kind of a time that is very denominational. It's um, not so celebrated in the non-denominational churches. Some do, some don't. But I noticed that the perception of Christ and his word and the Father and the word are viewed by each person differently. Their communication to others is different. And by getting into a group of people who are looking through the scriptures, you are enriching yourself by hearing the intake and perception of what other people are. You will see different anointings, different uh, communication, different analysis of each word, uh, the context of the scriptures, whether they're being learned in context or if they're just being pulled out as one 
piece of scripture, but not looking at the scripture before it or after it, or even some of the scriptures that went before it or are going to go after it, which is one of the reasons why people study the Bible. But if you're out there and you are a, a loner and you do not need the body of Christ, you are not, to my mind, developing in a whole entire manner so that you will be part of the body. You are making up part of the whole body. We can't. Ha we don't want an ear just sitting over there in a house somewhere. We need your ear, uh, your toe sitting over in another house, or your gift of helps, or your prophetic gifting, or your insight, or your ability to hear God or see what the scriptures are really saying. We need the whole body. Each one of us are different. And as we're put together, we get the whole word not just part of it. So do not think <clears throat> that by being a lone ranger, you are enriching your life and study. You need to be with other people. That's why it's called the body of Christ, not just the toe of Christ or the ear of Christ. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and read. Uh, I'm going to start with Daniel 10. And then this is going to be short. I just was giving a little bit of insight about this Sunday, which is the 21st of March. It is the first day of spring, I've been informed. My husband let me know that, which I thought that was kind of cool. So let's go ahead and do some reading. So we are in Daniel 10. And the theme is time, place, and preparation of Daniel for the vision. The vision of Christ glorified, transforming effect on Daniel, message of an identified heavenly messenger. Daniel is assured and strengthened. These last three chapters should be treated as one vision. It relates, aha, my book is jumping. It relates to the nation Israel in the immediate future and also in the latter days. For example, there is the historical little horn and also the little horn of the latter days. So that's two different periods of time. Some expositors consider this last vision to be the greatest of all the visions of Daniel. Although it may not have such stature, it is indeed the most unique section. There are features here which are different from all other chapters. In this last vision, even the method of revelation was changed. Another outstanding feature is that it fills in much detail of the preceding visions. While all was prophetic when it was given, at the present time much has been fulfilled and belongs to history. There is also a great deal that is yet prophetic to be fulfilled in the last days. The line of demarcation between what has been fulfilled and what is yet to be fulfilled is not always clear. We have already seen the principle of double reference, which refers to predictions that have a near and local fulfillment and also have a distant fulfillment. Of course, the fulfillment in the immediate future gives us the key for the far future fulfillment. For example, the historical fulfillment in Antiochus Epiphanes gives us a picture of the future fulfillment, which will be Antichrist. The key to understanding these last three chapters is found in the explanation the angel gives to Daniel. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. That's verse 14. In other words, it will be a long time before this will be fulfilled. And it concerns Daniel's people, the people of Israel. Let us caution you against trying to put the church in this section because Daniel is making it very clear that he is talking about his people, the nation of Israel. 
We are moving into a very eerie section. Maybe you would call it weird or strange. The veil of the supernatural world is partially and momentarily pulled aside, and we get a look into the unseen world. There is nothing here to satisfy the morbid curiosity of an idle spectator. However, there is enough to produce a beneficial and sobering effect upon the humble believer similar to the effect that it produced upon Daniel. This intrusion into the spiritual realm introduces the believer to the order of angels, both good and bad, angels fallen and unfallen. We will see something about the kingdom of Satan, which is about us today. There has been a great deal said and written about that recently. Many people take a little fact and then add a whole lot of fiction to it. We are going to stick to the facts that the Bible gives us here. Apparently, angels exercise a free will, since so some of them, by their own volition, followed Satan in his rebellion against God. Some of these belong to the order of demons to which frequent reference is made in the Gospels. The angels are different orders, ranks, positions, and have various powers and abilities. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And that's in Colossians 1, 6. This makes a separation in God's creation, not only of that which is in heaven and that which is in earth, but that which is visible and that which is invisible. There is a great realm today, and that is invisible. We are discovering that there are a great many things in this world of energy that we know very little about. We are told that he created thrones, which would be the archangels, like Michael and Gabriel, and other special envoys. There are dominions, which would be the cherubim and seraphim. There are principalities, which would be the generals, the brass of the angel hosts, and powers would be in privates, be the privates such as serve as guardian angels, and that's in Hebrew 1, verse 4. Some angels in the rank of principalities, that is, the generals, fell away to join with Satan. Notice what is said about principalities. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Ephesians 6, 12. Satan also has his angels organized according to rank. Such as one army is set over against another army, there are generals on both sides. Satan's principalities or generals seem to have the oversight of nations. I want to stop right there. I am following a prophet right now by the name of Robin Bullock. And on the 6th of December, there was, was it December, January? 6th of January. Okay, I wanted to make sure I had the date correct. On January the 6th, there was a storming up the White House steps by many, many people. Some were curious seekers. They may very well have been um, Republicans. They could have been uh, Trump's people, but most, a lot of them were Antifa, and some of them were uh, paid organizers, BLM, and whoever else was in the mix, paid rioters, paid obstructors. Well, um, the story that we're hearing from Robin Bullock, who is a prophet, he has a ministry called the 11th hour, which is the one that I find the favorite, but he is very prophetic. And he was 
in Washington, D.C. on the 6th of January with two other prophets. And he was there with Trump. He said that he called it the Red Sea. Now, we know that the word sea represents people. And he saw all the red mega hats, and he heard the Lord speak and said, Go up to the Capitol. He proceeded up to the Capitol, and he said, as he was looking up in the sky, he saw this storm brewing up above the Capitol building. What his perception of it was, it was principalities of darkness and warring in the skies. The next morning, when he looked out his hotel window, the skies were completely clear. And what the Lord said to him was, the war was in the sky, and now the war is here on the earth. What the war was and is, is to keep a prophecy from fulfilling. I will speak in code the same way as he speaks in code. Those who have an understanding of what I am saying, you will understand it. This is the reason why Jesus did not tell everybody everything. But now the war is here fighting against the prophecy that the legitimate president should be sitting in the White House and he is not there, but the illegitimate one, the self-appointed president is sitting in that seat with no administration, but a group that wants to change I did want to interject America. something when Robin Bullock talked about the Red Sea, the mega hats, I don't know which day it was, but there was an earthquake in the Red Sea in Egypt after all of that war was going on in heaven. You can go to the 11th hour and look up that uh, prophecy that he gave, but he said there was an earthquake in the Red Sea in Egypt. I don't know if it was the next day, but it was pretty close. So to him, it was a sign that that Red Sea was parting, whatever that means to us. And it reminded me of the story of King Saul. On the day that he was confronted by Samuel, Samuel said, This day your kingdom is taken from you. In other words, you're no longer king. He went at the word of the Lord to Jesse's sons and anointed David, the youngest that day, with oil as king. The Lord allowed a bad spirit to come upon Saul. And the only thing that would keep that spirit at bay, which was an evil spirit, was music. Music, and he, somebody said, please get us someone who is expert on the harp. And they remembered David, and David came in and immediately received favor from King Saul. Signs and wonders, that verse is in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 through 18. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages. Verse 18, they will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. 
they will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. We have ecumenical churches that tell us and some seminaries and some churches that tell us that all passed with the last apostle. That is not what my Bible says. It says they who believe will. It doesn't say those who believe will for a time and then not. These are signs and wonders that should be following the believer. If you have an anointing for deliverance, if you have an anointing for healing, if you have an anointing for prophecy, keep doing it. Get strong in it by the Word of God. And if you have to do it 300 to 1,000 times for it to finally come to pass, keep doing it. Because the Bible says, we will. We will. It doesn't say that you can't if you're... Uh, not special, or you got to have a big name, or you got to be known, well known. No, it says these signs will. And today I had a sign of favor, and favor would be, in my estimation, one of the signs and wonders. Favor, being placed in a situation such as David came to the very court where he would be king, but not that minute. The Lord was training him up to be king, to be able to fight battles. One of the songs that I heard going into our prayer meeting today was, the Lord fights my battles, fights my battles. The Lord, he fights my battles. But we have to cooperate with him. We have to be ready, as it says in Ephesians, to have our armor on. However you do that. With me, it's I need the filling of the Holy Spirit. I need it as full as I can get. You will be filled according to how much word you have in you. Because it is the Holy Spirit that brings back to remembrance those things that are permanent and eternal. And if you have not heard the word, now you can get a check in your spirit if someone is saying something that doesn't seem scriptural or they seem to be twisting it. You get a check and then you can go to your Bible. But wouldn't it be nice if you already knew what it was that they were twisting? several instances I can point out right from the pulpit a lie a lying tongue I still don't know whether they believed what they were saying or not but the devil got a lie out of that mouth and I remember going to one and saying retract that statement that is not scriptural and they wouldn't retract it I give you any viewer who is watching anything that I am saying, if I am saying something that's misleading or it's off a little bit or you don't agree with me and you can scripturally show me or even not scripturally, I have no problem debating. Uh, even at the table uh, today, you everybody can have their own interpretation of even just one word. Just one. Um, one man of God points out in Romans 7, chapter 7, I believe, therefore there is no condemnation to those who believe in Christ Jesus, da, da, da. He said, that's great if you are not in sin. But a believer can suddenly go into sin and lie and refuse to repent. Is that person still no condemnation? He says you're condemned at that point until you repent. So the issue saved, always saved, does that really wash? Does it really wash when we're talking about, I believe it's in um, the 8th chapter of Romans, 
those who are predestined. Does that mean that there are only a few people that God has predestined to be saved? Or is that off? You can go in there and look for the scriptures. But right now we're in Daniel. But does that mean that the person believes that? We know that Calvinism believes that. They have a thing called TULIP, and I could give a whole teaching about that. That You can look it up again yourself. It'd be nice. Go ahead and study. But God, whosoever will believe on him, he doesn't predestine certain people to believe in him. They're predestined. We are all predestined. There's not just 144 people that Jehovah's Witnesses say are going to go to heaven. We're not going to, uh, the men are not going to get virgins by killing themselves in jihad when they go to heaven. Matter of fact, they're not going to heaven. They are going to hell. And let me be straight with you. I also made the statement, I'd like to see some hell and brimstone come to the pulpit. That scares some people. We have been so milk fed that any meat is too strong for many believers because they believe that Jesus only is mercy and grace. The Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are three in one. They are the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God in the Old Testament is the same God in the New Testament. Yes, he loves us. But yes, he can get angry. And how long will he strive with men? He even says that in his word. How long will I strive? I will not always strive with man. And that might be one person. I will not, always, I will not strive with a person. Finally, after a while, some people will resist the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit is all over them, calling them into the kingdom, accepting Christ, and they will not budge. They will not accept him. And some of these people may go into, into eternity lost. We need to be pliable and hear the Lord. And I heard uh, one word twice today, and I'm waiting to hear it again for the third time to confirm something that I believe he said to me today. You need confirmation. It's just don't go all half cocked. Um, and somebody did give me a good word uh, this week. Wait for an opening before you speak. If the Lord spoke something to you and he wants you to say something, he will give you an opening. And sometimes that opening doesn't come for weeks, months, or years. Because the ear that's supposed to hear it will not hear it if it's spoken with the wrong timing. Okay, let's go back into let's go back into Daniel. As I said before, this isn't going to be real long. This is just pretty much going to be, we're going to read the introductory, and that'll be it. Okay, I'll start here. Satan also had his angels organized according to rank. Just as one army is set over against another army, there are generals on both sides. Satan's principles, or generals, seem to have the oversight of nations. His powers are the privates of his army who are demons who seek possession to possess human beings. Now remember that a demon has no power unless it can enter and use a human being to do his work. Uh, he can speak to you all day long, which is why we say take our thoughts captive. But once you that thought becomes part of you and you start acting on it, then at that point you have accepted his rulership and he can start working through you demonically. If you're a believer, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and he is not able to get into uh, the Holy of Holies. We are spirit, soul, and um, body. 
and the spiritual spirit part of us where the Holy Spirit uh, lies, he can't get in. But he can certainly get you to do bad things if you do not take captive these fiery darts that are continuing. Uh, you have to take them captive, you have to put them down, and you have to say, those are not my thoughts. In Jesus' name, get out. Go away. Um, and uh, know your scriptures so that you can use them as weapons, which is why Jesus did what he did uh, in the wilderness. He used the word of God against Satan, and he won. Because Satan knows scriptures just as well as we do. Okay. His powers are the privates of his army, who are demons to seek to possess human beings. The rulers of the darkness of this world are demons who have charge of Satan's worldly business. And we think he has a lot of monkey business going on down here. Then there is spiritual spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies, which are the demons who have charge of religion. You may not realize it, but Satan's department of religion is la the largest department of all. He is in the business of religion. Many folks think Satan is against religion. No, indeed. He's promoting religion, not Christ, but religion. These two groups move in the arena of this universe in which we live. They are engaged in ceaseless warfare to capture the souls of men. We will see more of this as we go through this section, which will be time, place, and preparation of Daniel for the vision. And we will uh, see that next time. So let's go ahead and pray our way out. Lord, I thank you for beginning chapter 10 of Daniel. I thank you, Lord, for giving us insight and that with our open ears and open spirit to you, that you will give instructions to us that we will be able to obey because we will hear you so clearly. We will hear you through your word, Lord God. And our prophecies that you give us will line up with scripture. They will not go against you or your word. Lord, I ask you to bless each and every viewer. I pray health, deliverance, and salvation to each and every person. Lord, I healing specifically, in particular one person I met today, if they do see this video, I pray for plantar fasciitis and for bone spurs and for wisdom whether it is surgery by a doctor or that God, that you would heal this person and let them know that you are still in the healing business. I thank you, Lord, for healing me of plantar fasciitis and not even knowing you that well. But it does say, physician, heal yourself, which is what they used against Jesus because they thought he was as mad as a hatter. Lord God, please protect the believers that are out doing warfare, Father. We lift them up to you, Father, in Jesus' name. We lift up Terrell to you, Lord, that her sight will be restored as she cries out to you that any spiritual blindness will have, she will have sight in the spiritual realm and then in the natural realm. Her eyes will come to sight, Father God. We pray this and hold on to it, Father, in Jesus' name. And if there's anyone out there that does not have the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, take heed. If you think and know that tribulation is coming and you're going to wait till the last minute, as was pointed out by... Um, Jan Markell this weekend with one of her uh, people that she was interviewing. When the rapture happens, you could very well be the person driving the bus or flying the plane and not be a believer thinking that you could go ahead and accept the Lord during tribulation. But what if you're killed before the tribulation begins? If you also, uh, they have a video out that says you may be 
concerned. Millions of people have left this earth. They've disappeared. Why didn't you take me, Lord? At which point you have the ability to get right with God and go in the second coming or be martyred and go be with the Lord. This is out of the body, in the spirit, with the Lord. So, if you don't know Christ, it's just a matter of accepting what he has done for you. Um, I think I'll go through Romans Road at some point. There's a very good method there, and I will go ahead and put it up. I actually have it marked in my NIV Bible. And if you don't have an NIV Bible, a New Testament, and you'd like to have one, I would be more than happy to send one to you. You can either email me, write me, or leave a message at youinhimministries.com, and it will go into my voicemail or my uh, email box, and I will uh, contact you. If you have a prayer need, just go into youandhimministries.com and go into the uh, chat box in there, leave your mailing address and your uh, prayer request in the chat area. And uh, we will definitely write that out and put that on the table on Sunday when I meet and also on Tuesdays when I meet with another prayer uh, Bible study. My name is Pam Gunderson. I am the host of You and Him Ministries and Bible, Bible Study and Christian News. My uh, telephone number is 833-PAM-TALKS or 833-726-8255. You can reach me at my email, pam at youandhim.info or pam at youandhimministries.com. And the mailing address is 1018. Uh, it's Pamela Gunderson in care of You and Him Ministries, 1018 East Wishkos Street, Suite 213, Aberdeen, Washington, 98520. I wish you a wonderful start of your week. And this is spring, and we pray for sunshine, and we pray for miraculous healings. We pray for deliverance, and we pray for salvation. I wish you a blessed evening in Christ, and I will see you next time as we go into deep, deep Daniel 10.